Hello everyone, it's me again, Kenan. Um, yes, my name is Kenan Asiyev. I study English language and literature. And today I thought that maybe I should make a new video about historiographic metafiction. Okay, so when we say historiographic metafiction, we understand uh, two different terms, uh, metafiction and historical fiction. So when we say metafiction, uh, metafiction uh, is uh, basically a fictional work but when you read a, a metafictional literary work, you understand that you actually read a fiction. And whatever you see on the stage in theater, or whatever you read or listen even, is not real. And to, to, to understand that, the writer, the author of the work, is giving you some messages. Maybe in theater, on the stage, or when you just read it, the, the author gives you some message that, hey, reader or the audience, whatever you watch or read is not based on the real story. So that is metafiction. If you have um, a message from the writer that makes you uh, aware that whatever you watch or read is not real, is a fictional work, then this is metafiction. Now that is that about metafiction. So metafiction makes you makes you understand the relationship between life and art, the relationship between reality and literature. Uh, basically, writers want to have metafiction in their literary work because they want you to criticize, they want the readers and the viewers to criticize the situation. They don't want to be lost in their emotions. Uh, because when you lo when you are lost in your emotions, you lose your ability to criticize. You 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 act without thinking, but when you are able to criticize, uh, you are able to to do it logically, without any emotions. So that is basically writers try to make their readers understand that criticizing things is very important. Metafiction itself started to uh, become popular in, in, uh, in, the, in the last century, in the 20th century, especially in the time of postmodernism. However, if you go back to the history, um, the contemporary taste by Chaucer was also a metafiction, and then we have Don Quixote and so on, so more. We see metafiction in these literary works, however, they were not that obvious. But in the 20th century, that became very obvious in literary works. Um, that's not about metafiction, historical fiction. Historical fiction also is considered as uh, romance fiction, and it was uh, it was pointed out by Walter Scott. And when the idea with uh, um, historical fiction that you you basically need to have a history, and you have to put. Uh, you have to put the characters uh, in a certain historical period. For example, let's say that right now you are sitting in your home and you write a, a novel about um, the Victorian period or about the medieval period. So that is basically a historical novel or historical fiction. The situ the, everything could be in a historical time, in a certain historical period. The story, the plot is in a certain historical period. But whatever you write is, again, based on no truth. There is nothing real. Everything is fictional. Um, now, when we say historiographic metafiction, historiographic metafiction is a fiction based on no reality. And when you read or when you watch, because it's metafiction, the writer is giving you some messages, hey, whatever you watch or read is not based on reality. That's that. Also, you have historical characters or historical figures in your story. Basically, you have uh, real-life characters um, in, in, a, in a certain historical period. Again, you see messed down there. Um, so, historical metafiction is the combination of historical fiction or romance fiction, we call it and metafiction. Okay, I hope I could explain um, 
thank you for watching and if you if you like it uh, you will put a thumbs up that will be very nice uh, and write some comments maybe bye bye ciao see you in the next video bye